Here in this time, here in this place, here we are standing face to face. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. Here for the broken, here for the strong, here in this temple we belong. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. And we cry, Holy, Holy, Holy are you. We cry, Holy, Holy, Holy and true. Amen, we do believe our God is here. Amen, we do believe our God is here. Our God is here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we gather here on the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us acknowledge our sins and in that way prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us raise our voices in praise as we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of the light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elijah came to Shunam, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterwards, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elijah is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, 
let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to visit us, he may stay there. Some time later, Elijah arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elijah asked, can something be done for her? His servants, Geazi, answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elijah said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elijah promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day. And through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading of the letter from St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ has risen from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus says to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you, receive me, and whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. In the gospel today, we hear the word of Jesus speaking to us about what kind of followers, what kind of disciples he wants us to be. To give Jesus out of the love of God and to give his message top priority. He's not looking for your vote, he's looking for more. He wants you to be willing, out of love of God, to follow him throughout your life, wherever you may be in all you do and with whomever you might meet. To be a good Christian is a challenge, but it is one each of us can fill, whether we are out of shape or slow-witted or more slow-witted, whether we come from a bad background or are more privileged. God will upgrade you for his loving service. He'll augment you with his grace to turn your natural abilities to work for you and others, to help in the salvation of all. That's his promise. In baptism. So in baptism, we receive one of the virtues of the three is the virtue of the love of God. And this love allows us to live in him, to share his life. We follow him. How do we do that? Well, we have that starting ingredient ingredient from baptism, the love of God that we are infused with. It is a beginning, but we have to exercise that love and grow it because it is not something that we naturally possess, something given to us 
It is God's own love that it comes along with that new life that we are spiritually born into when we are baptized. But isn't there already love in the world, the affection we have for one another, those close to us, our parents? That, I said, is the starting point. And Jesus looks at that natural love in the gospel we have for our, our parents, our children, our loved ones, and he gives it importance. But the love of God is something greater. It is, of course, supernatural. Jesus gives it to us straight today in his message. It's good to love our parents, but he says, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. It would seem rare to have to make a choice between loving our parents or spouse or children and loving God, but we are required to pledge our allegiance to Christ above all else, should we be asked. Like uh, Socrates, he had to choose whether to take the easy way out and disavow all his teachings, all the truth he was spreading, or to take the hard way out and take the poison. He chose to die for the truth. And if he had not chosen to die, he would not have been remembered. So Jesus does not stop at simply claiming he loves us. He loves us as God loves us. He actually dies for us. And he challenges us to be prepared to do the same, to be self-sacrificing, so we should not be afraid to suffer on account of our belief in Christ. In fact, we should expect to suffer. So Jesus tells us to take up our cross. It's not easy, but God helps us. So let us look at the terrible death and agony Christ was able to suffer on the cross. It was a death that people of his time were familiar with. They knew what it looked like to carry a cross because usually those condemned would carry the cross beam and they would be staggering under its weight down the path and then die in agony later upon it. And you might know St. Francis, another Christ asked a thousand years later approximately to undergo that type of suffering. But remember that he prayed that if God granted him to suffer such pain and agony, that God also let him experience his great love. So you might know St. Francis got his wish, and for the last couple of years of his life, he secretly, because he covered the wounds, suffered the stigmata the five wounds of Christ on his hands, his feet, and on his side. So that love, that example of St. Francis, tells us how much is possible, we, that we can all experience an increase in God's love as far as we are willing to practice it. So what Jesus asks of us is to suffer alongside or with his great sacrifice on the cross, probably to a lesser extent than St. Francis, but this uh, showing forth of our love can only be done with the help of the love of God, which I said we were given to start with, and we must encourage to grow from baptism. We want to naturally preserve our life, but really dying to self is something we are faced with every day. Will I choose this little comfort or pleasure or deny it and grow in God's love? And remember when temptation confronts us, I didn't say that if it confronts us, for it will, 
God will never tempt us beyond our strength. And that is found in uh, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, I believe the first one. But with each conquered temptation or sacrifice that we lovingly choose, we die to self. And St. Paul tells us in the second reading that we also share in the life of Christ. So through baptism, we go down in the water, so to speak, though we have it poured over our forehead in the name of the Trinity. And we will, and in that way, we die in Christ, then we will also rise with him. Not only uh, do we uh, help uh, Christ in his mission by denying ourselves, we also must show our love in loving service as his disciples. And it is not only through the vocations of priesthood or the diaconate, but by also or being a religious who takes vows, but by being what, I, what you can call supporting uh, supporting Christ in supportive services. We all know what uh, a business would be like if the little people who not only ran it, but uh, provided the means to sell the service offered, if they weren't involved. So we are all important and contribute by spreading God to, to the spreading of God's message by our example, our prayers, and supporting others who are in the ministries. We see an example of this in the first reading. The Shunammite woman realized that Elisha was the, a prophet. He's the prophet that followed Elijah. And she found it in her heart to show him this loving service out of gratitude because he represented God. And Jesus tells us, whoever uh, uh, receives a prophet, for example, receives him and will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones just a cup of water, only a cup of cold water, what little we do sometimes is seen as deserving of a reward because of who we are doing it for. We are doing it for Christ. So we can uh, support this mission of Christ. It's called the apostolate according to our ability and means. And it is necessary. And God will reward each accordingly. There's an example uh, in the Protestant faith, but it still applies to Catholicism because it's a Christian story, of a shoemaker who knew this young boy. And the young boy had a dream of becoming a preacher. So this shoemaker happened to be very uh, widely read. Uh, he, he read a lot. He had studied. And he helped the boy, helped form him, for entering the ministry of preaching. And then finally, the boy became a young man and he was licensed to preach. I was about to begin preaching and the shoemaker asked a favor of him. He said, I always wanted to be a preacher, but because of the circumstances in my life, I was not able to do so. So would you wear a sh these shoes I will give you at no price. And the young man agreed, and, he, and the preacher said, when you wear those shoes, uh, it, you will be fulfilling my dream also, and, and you will be doing the work of God, and I will be there supporting you by having uh, made those shoes and helped you along the way. So the uh, preach, new preacher gladly agreed to do that. So. God will reward that man's service to the ministry.
So these vital people are you. And in the, these days, we hear a lot about those frontline fighters, right? The healthcare workers. You too are frontline worker. Just by coming here uh, to uh, receive a sacrament, to hear the word, you are contributing to the spreading of the gospel. And I know you had to uh, sign up online to get in, but even those who cannot, what, who have tried, are also serving God by promoting the spread of his word. And isn't that a much more important thing than even uh, going to the grocery store to uh, fulfill our, our physical needs by buying food? So, in the gospel today, we are challenged to live as Jesus' disciples, to follow him, to deny ourselves, to show our love for him in gratitude, also by supporting the church in whatever state and life you are called to. So let us uh, continue in, to grow in his love and practice that charity he has implanted within us through baptism. Amen. Let us now profess our faith in the Nicene Creed as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the abundance of the Father's love, we now bring our prayers and petitions before him. For church leaders, may God look graciously upon them as they continue to strengthen and give courage to those entrusted to their pastoral care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all civil leaders, may the God of peace and justice inform their efforts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us here, may God restore in us whatever is necessary for fullness of life and health. Let us praise to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our beloved dead, 
may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and enjoy His favor forever. Let us praise to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Carol Lenin, let us praise to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your Son, Jesus Christ, and his love and his message to us, and in the gift of the Holy Spirit. We ask you, hear our prayers as, as you wish to grant them according to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of the sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic prayer three will be used. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray on the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gabriel, the archangel, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the size of peace. God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was homeless, you opened your door. When I was naked, you gave me your coat. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was weary, you helped me find rest. When I was anxious, you calmed all my fears. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When in a prison you came to my cell, when on a sick bed you cared for my needs, now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was laughed at, you stood by my side. When I was happy, you shared in my joy. Now enter into the home of my Father. What's
So whatever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now. Cup of life is poured. Come and share the supper of the Lord. This is the bread of God coming down from heaven. Giving life to us, to all the world. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now. Cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. We have one announcement. It's time for our annual back to school drive for kids crossing foster children. From June 27 through July 26, a table will be at the Natex for your donations. See the bulletin for a list of needed items. Thank you for your support, encouragement, and prayers for these vulnerable children. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend Amen. us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of all my foes. He will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadows of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I need not shrink before the terrors of the night, nor stand alone before the light of day. No harm shall come to me, no arrow strike me down. No evil settled in my soul. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day.